Hey everyone. So if you're not familiar with Tom series data, it is simply data that is captured at a specific time, such as a company's stock price is a classic example of time series data. And here's an example of Apple stock expressed as time series here. So in this graph, the, uh, the close price is on the Y axis and then the, the date is on the X. It's pretty much just a line graph. And time series analysis is mostly used for financial or IoT applications. However, there is often so much data that it's impossible to go through it all manually to see if any of the data points are irregular or anomalies. And this is where anomaly detection comes in. And in this video, I'll show how to do it with an ML.NET transform. I'm here in Visual Studio and I already have a .NET core project uh, console project loaded here and first let's take a look at our data and as you see it's simply just uh, a column with dates and then a column of um, especially our energy consumption on that that date and time and so the first thing we need to do is to get our NuGet packages downloaded so first we need to do uh, Microsoft the ml.net package and version 1.2 for this by the way. So after that we also need the time series package as well. All right, with those loaded we will go back here to our program and like always first thing we need to do is create a new ml context And then we need to load in our data. So I do context that data load from text file. And we need to create kind of a, a data schema class. So we'll do that. I'll just do it down here. Call it energy data. And here, I want to tell a load column zero. That's going to be a date time. And we'll just call it date. For our next one, we'll call them one. It's going to be a float, and we'll call that the energy. Good. So give it the path, which is energy hourly CSV, and I already have it within the solution here. And then it has a header and a separator. Is the All right. Next, we'll define our pipeline. Context that transforms, and this is going to be detect spike by SSA, which is singular spectrum analysis. And for our output column, we do name of, and I'm actually going to create our prediction class here called energy prediction. And this is going to be a vector type of two items within the vector. And it'll be a double, an array of doubles, and we just call prediction. So for our output column, we do the name of, we do the name of energy prediction, prediction property. It's just going to get the name of this so we don't have to hard code it every time and in our input column we're going to do the same name of it's going to be energy 
data dot energy. The next we have a series of kind of hyperparameters, and I'm just gonna kind of fill these in. Uh, you free feel free to kind of play around with these parameters, and uh, oftentimes playing around with them can give you a better kind of a model or transform in this case. So the first one is the confidence. I'm going to say take things that are 98% confident, percent confident. Do the training window size. I'll just do 90 in the seasonality window size. I'll just do 30. And last one is the p-value history length. I'll just leave that at 30 as well. So there's our pipeline. So now we can generate our transformed data by calling pipeline that fit on our data. And from there, just do transform on that same data. The next, we can create our predictions from our pipeline. So we'll do a context data that create enumerable. That's going to be it. Give the transform data, and we tell it to reuse the row object as true. And then, uh, I'm going to set it to a list. We are fitting on our data for this pipeline, and that data that comes in this is going to be an odd data view. And what this is doing is just basically transforming the odd data view into an enumeral so we can loop over it. All right, so, so we want to get some columns from our data here. So first, we want to get the energy column. So we get that from our, from our regular data here. And we have a get column method we can use, and that's going to be a float in the name of energy. This is before we transform it, by the way, to an array, and then the the date column. This is just so we can see prediction if it's an anomaly a lot or not. If it is, we can tell what the energy level is and what date it is that came from it. And so I'm going to do a for loop next so I can go through all the Predictions, predictions through each of the count predictions. And if the prediction item within the loop, then the prediction, the first item in the prediction equals one. And this, this tells it if it's an anomaly or not. So this position will be one or zero. If it's one, that means it's an anomaly. If it's zero, that means it's uh, not an anomaly. It's just a regular value. value. So we're going to write out uh, the date and the energy item that's on the particular row. And then we're going to just write down an anomaly or not. It should always be one. All right, and then we'll do a console read line so it stays up. So that should do it. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. So we're getting some anomalies here. It's like quite a few. And so now we can actually go through this data and kind of look at each of the days here. And so for 225-2018, we see at the hours of 6, 7, 8, and 9 have anomalies. 
So what we can actually do is maybe cross-reference that to what was going on that day um, and see if anything may have caused that anomaly. All right, so that's it for this one. Uh, just a kind of a quick video to show how to do some anomaly detection within MO.net. And until